Here's a bit of the aesthetic of what we decided for the Vox Populi when they, they take over an area of the city. And the original thought was that they make it bleed. Um, and that led us to the idea that, you know, they, they basically paper the city with these these red these red sheets, these red rags, and it gives the overall overall impression that this the buildings, these rich, affluent buildings are, are actually bleeding onto the street. And it also gave them their their color, which is red. Yes. Uh, to have the, you know, the, as compared to the founders who sort of built the city, you know, the Vox Populi are sort of imprinting themselves on top of the city. Yes. So you, have this, you have to have the original aesthetic of the founders underneath, and then the, the Vox Populi aesthetic. And you can see the Vox Populi here dressed in, you know, their, their normal clothes, but they've painted themselves red. And you even see, like, in a moment when that Zeppelin comes up. That's got red paint all over it. It's yeah. something they've, they've taken control of. Yeah. And then that's going to be a theme you'll see throughout the game, even in, in weapons and and, um, and vigors and things like that, that the, the Vox have taken things the founders created and modified them. Yeah. And that becomes into gameplay as well. And that, you want to talk about this too? Yeah, this is, so yeah, so we sure show dramatically what the terrors were, and here's the first time where we sort of really want to demonstrate how the terror system works, which is, you know, Elizabeth basically, there are things in the world that don't exist um, but could exist, and Elizabeth, sort of, you have a choice of which of those things is brought in, is brought into the into existence in our world, and you know, and each of the you know a lot of the combat environments you have when Elizabeth with you is with you, you'll have these opportunities, and Elizabeth has some um, there's some kind of resource system which we'll be talking about later, where she can't bring in everything to existence. You here's have to another. make choices. Yeah, here's another one. You, know, you should use. You know, like the one-two punch in Bioshock One, you know, you use the the bucking bronco um, vigor here to pop them in the air, and then you instantiate. You have a loop to instantiate this um, rail cart to, to slam into that. Yeah, and you'll see later on this turret too, where she says that she can't bring it in. Yeah, because she's out of that resource. Yep. Um, you can want to bring in this turret, but, but you're not going to be able to. So you have to, you know, think carefully about you know how yep. you use those tears. This is a good place to start talking about the skylines and the AIs on the skylines. You know, we, we had done an early animation previs of these guys on skylines and you know I gave the direction to the animator during the previs that I you know, really want them to look like the cliff divers that you often see. The guys are jumping off like 50 foot cliffs and beautiful swan dives and they, you know, they hold that form forever. And he did this amazing animation showing you know these guys jumping these high distances and it, it's great that we managed to get all this stuff that you're seeing in game is systemic. These guys are Riding the skylines, that they can get zip back and forth on them, you know, with the greatest of ease. No pun intended there, but uh, and, and, completely and systemically. And that's the challenge of this game: is you have these things that look quite cinematic, like this Zeppelin appearance. You know, that Zeppelin was just brought in dynamically through the security system, and the player here could either try to shoot down the Zeppelin, you know, with his regular weapons or bring in turrets and things like that, or you know, in this in the version we're showing here, Booker's going to try to actually board the Zeppelin and, and yep. destroy it from within. But that's a player's choice. And that's you know, that's the challenge of this game is these very cinematic feeling things that are actually quite within the player's um, control. And um, so, you know, we really want to get that idea ac across in this demonstration um, to, to show that, you know, sort of the player's ability to choose of how, how he deals with these different problems and sort of the challenges that you yeah, know, they can face getting up there. And something, you know, we, we can point out now if this, this came out is that if you see the, the white circle when you're on the skyline, those are indications to where the player can jump to. It's not just a linear experience when you're on the skyline. We're giving you full options to jump skyline to skyline and be completely uh, kick ass with it. Yeah, we have played around for a long time with like how you're going to, um, you know, what's the right level of control in the skylines because they're very... You know, if, if things go very fast when you're on that, you can, you can, you'll see some of those white white dots Sean was talking about when you watch the player's view on, on um, towards some of the uh, towards um, the skylines. But you know, we played a long time about like, would you want complete freedom to jump? Do you want to just hit the A button and jump? But the player then kept missing and falling to his death, and that was really awful. And then we came up with this system where you see that white dot right there, um, where we'll basically indicate where you can make a safe jump, and if you hit the currently it's the bumper. Um, the right bumper. If you if you if you if you make that jump, um, it, it, sorry. If you if you hit the bumper, then you will make that jump. Right? Yes. And you say safe, but really, it's 
<laughs> virtually anywhere yeah. you can go. You have a tremendous amount of flexibility in the system. I think another thing interesting about the Skylines here is, as we were crafting and learning ourselves about the Skyline experience, you see the, the, the fight that Booker was just in was on a much higher tier of the city. As we're crafting the Skyline experience, as we're thinking about how the city's constructed, this is the first time that we really felt that, that we expressed the city, it, we, that we got its verticality right, that it is that is a block stacked on a block stacked yep. on a block that preserves the feeling of a real world city but then orients it all vertically and you know one of the great things about us doing demos is we we pose ourselves some pretty challenging problems that have been bothering us for months and have to answer them um, and that was one of the things we answered here and we're able to move confidently building the rest of the game um, with a set of sort of core principles and core values about our space and here Booker's made it onto the Zeppelin and quickly just dispatched it. And yeah, uh, the tech team did a great job with the, the technology behind the Zeppelin actually animating and moving around the world. Which is a whole other thing that we could... <laughs> the fact <laughs> that you can get on that. Yeah. 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 Essentially a mini level into itself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They um, make it look real easy and real seamless, but it's a lot of technical work. <laughs> you will get your freedom and and here's I where you win see win. the Zeppelin crashing on the right. You can see it a little <laughs> crashing just on the right over there. Yeah. Um, okay. And you know, and this is where you know we really want to sort of wrap up the you know the sort of mini story of what's happening here. This is actually how this level in Korea ends. Songbird shows you back up. And he's about to kill you. Tosses you and um, to sort of play off the drama here of, of, of Elizabeth. You know, she's established her stakes already. Yep. She doesn't want to go. I mean, last really, time. really here. You know, we, we've got Elizabeth and a giant monster, and you know John Mangill, the guy who animated this scene, had to sell that Elizabeth is sacrificing herself, making the ultimate sacrifice for you uh, so that you can live. And, you know, John's working with these very intimate animations of Songbird touching Elizabeth and her hugging him, and he's huge and she's tiny. And him turning away like they're like in a, a lover's yeah. quarrel almost. Yeah. And getting that Not work... look at her, yeah. Making that work in a, in a you know, with a with a, with a young woman and a 30-foot you know, mechanical bird creature is is not trivial. And that caused us to go through this scene, through yeah. the animation, well, through not the animatics, trivial, but second by second. Yeah. Also, second. not having the luxury of cutting cameras and, and taking optimal angles. Like, we had to do this all from the point of I'm laying on my back looking up at it. Yeah. So you put Washington Crossing the Delaware painted on the top of that dome, you don't even see it. That's just one of the things Shame. making video games. For sure. And that's something we like talked about. Like, for yeah. Oh, we talked about top. it. We debated <laughs> which painting would be on the inside of the dome. And I think you see Washington's knee. And, we had, and we had a different one at first. And I'm like, no, no, we no, no, that's painting. not the painting. And, we, and, and <laughs> can can we, the video's <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah, but you know, in the game, you'll run yeah, into in it. In the game, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the game, you'll see. It. And you know, when it's funny. You, we look back on this and like the amount of work and the amount of arguments and some things you were so you know you're always certain that it's like that's going to be so important and then it turns out Where to be not it? important yeah. at all. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then something else you think is going to be um, th not going to matter at all people really tune yeah, into yeah. it yeah. Yeah. Um, you know I, I think what was thrilling for us on this demo um, is was that we, we sort of tried to take all the things that were the most challenging for us the things we were most scared of like Elizabeth um you're Elizabeth as a human. Elizabeth and the human in the yes. world. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. Sean. No, I'm saying that was one of the things absolutely terrifying to me. And, you know, doing demos like this where we need to show and not tell the audience, because we always joke that we're not, we don't ship with the game. The, the audience needs to understand what they're seeing without us. It really forced us to get these systems and animations and art, like all that stuff into place. And, like, as, as you can see in the demo, really make it work. And, um, you know, I, I think for us, you know, all those things we were most scared of Elizabeth and just, like, being with her in the world and because mm -hmm. we can't script her all the time, you know, like, you know, you just walk around, you know, you're doing one scene, you run in the other direction, you start shooting somebody and all the systems. And that's, you know, obviously in a demo, we have a lot more control over what the player does. But in the actual game, that's, you know, all the problems started becoming very apparent to us yep. while yeah, working this through. How do you navigate a vertical city? How do you do that with a companion? Yeah. How do you, you know? How do you, you know, how do you... You know, engage in combat on the skyline without it getting totally overwhelming. Mm -hmm. yep. And these, we learned so much doing this. Um, there were so, you know, because you, when you work on games, you tend to sort of, it, generally, you, you're sort of filling the glass up equally. And then when you do, and you're like, oh, and you always sort of leave yourself always. I'm like, oh, I'm sure that will be fine later. I and mean, then when you actually do a it's demo, you have to show to, to say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and you can end up quite in a lot of trouble. 
I think, doing that. And what was great here is you you sort of say, okay, well, we can't, everything, we have to bring things to a, a finished looking level of polish, and yep. that exposes all these hideous problems. And while this is a great, you know, we're very happy with the demo, we we sort of, it's also humbling about, yes. okay, you know, what we have to do to actually finish the game. Because we've done this a lot, and we know the difference between it doing an E3 demo and the difference between shipping a game is... Yes, hanging mm-hmm. out to the public. Is, yeah, there's still <laughs> a lot of glasses to fill. Yep. Yep. 